Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures Daily Dose of Nature. Today's topic, top tips for photographing highlights of Southern Africa. Presented by NatHab Expedition Leader, Richard DiGuvea. I'm your host, Rob Mess. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Over to you, Richard. Thank you, Rob, and thanks everyone for tuning in. It feels weird talking to my webcam again. It has been months. I've been out in the field and really been go, 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 go. So much so that summer in Portugal and in the USA has changed to winter. And now it is dark outside and life is changing and the leaves are changing, even though it's still a little warm on this side. And I've enjoyed a month at home, which feels very weird. But I'm back and uh, we've got this talk today about top tips, top tips for photographing highlights of Southern Africa. And really what I wanted to touch base on here was giving everyone a bit of an idea and start looking at next year and how you would like to get into Africa and how you would like to photograph it. Um, a, a lot of our emphasis as we move forward with NatHab is trying to become a better photographic or increase our photographic presence in, in the world. And as you all know, my love is photography and I really love teaching it. So I thought I'd highlight a few of the places that we go on our pro photo trip to Southern Africa. You know, the big things that we have to consider when we're planning a trip for photographing anywhere is one, the time of year, two, what we wish to photograph, and three, how are we gonna maximize the opportunities when we're out there? Now on these photo pro trips that we've started to put together, we have sat down and created itineraries that will give you everything and give a really rounded thought to this. So next year, September, I'm going to be leading one of these trips into um, Southern Africa, and we're going to look at the different places we go. Now, Africa, as we know it and we see it and we get exposed to it, is often thought of and explained as a big five destination. Africa is an enormous continent with so many, so many different biomes. And each biome has its different animals that live in those spaces. And even when we do safari, people go, but how can you go back on safari? I've been doing this for 16 years now. And every time I go, I have never experienced the same day. I've never taken the same photograph twice. And I don't think I've ever seen the same thing twice because Everything is unique. And every time we go, especially when it comes to photography, going to a different space offers you a different photographic opportunity. So I'm gonna start by going into the desert because that's where we start the photo pro destination is we go into the desert. We go into the oldest desert on the planet, the Namib. And this desert has been around for so long and it has some very unique aspects to it. From sand dunes, which are blown in from South Africa and moved up the coastline and then brought onto the desert and creates these dunes that in the mornings, they light up as the sun rises in the east. You have one side of the um june lit up and the other side darkened and it creates a unique space for us to create context in photography to create images that are different to the everyday and even though we go to places that a lot of people go to it's about using that creative endeavor in order to create something that is a little bit different so for me the idea of putting an animal into an area or a space that tells the scale and the size of things. So here we have this, this Oryx 
down the bottom, two oryx down the bottom here. And it's a fairly large antelope. But when we're photographing something, we really want to try and one show the animal but we want to try and show the animal in the environment and the moment we show something with a massive dune above it and a dune that then goes over it even higher we can start feeling the magnitude of what is going on so our photography gets influenced by how much space we use very often in photography we're told that the longest lenses are our best lenses. It's true because it gets us closer to a subject without having to physically get closer to the subject, which will normally scare the animal away, or two, put your life in danger should you photograph something that's big and scary. So we're always trying to get some context. Anytime we're trying to get context is we're trying to put people or scale into perspective perspective is everything and in something like a desert the biggest thing we're photographing is how big and desolate it is so here we have our guests leaving dead flay which is one of the most photographed places on the planet but the way we do it is one morning we go in and we do it and then the next day or two days later we go in in the afternoon when everyone else is trying to get out of the park because it's a national park, we have a little bit of extra time and we go in there. And the last time we went in there, there was no one but us. In one of the most photographed places on the planet, we were only seven of us walking around amongst something that is really stark and contrasty and beautiful with these petrified trees that were petrified about a thousand years ago and we're now in a space where we can show scale oh sorry show scale and do different things we also in a desert environment and in one of the environments where star photography is really important so in deserts we're looking at landscapes we're looking at astrophotography we're looking at space and showing the space and really beyond the photography, having some fun. And I love going to Sosa's Flay because we get on these quad bikes and we cruise around the desert and whilst you're packing your cameras and probably maybe not even bringing your camera along, it becomes such an awesome activity to be out there, to be amongst the dunes, amongst these rocks formations and just experiencing something that is completely unique and different. One of the other cool activities that we get to do out there is going on a hot air balloon. Again, your perspective changes. When we're planning any space to go and photograph, we're trying to think about how we can create unique situations that give us images that not everyone has. In this day and age where photography is very accessible and it becomes easier and easier as technology goes because the technology is aiding us and pushing us in a direction that makes it a little easier for us to get the focus we need to um, correctly expose the image all of these little bits and pieces that used to be very difficult on film become easier and easier and easier so now we're looking to change the perspective to change the way we look at things, to change the angle of approach and to change our composition so that our images are unique, unique to the world. And what this gives us is the ability to be higher up. Here we're all having a party up at the top and it gives us the ability to look down on the world. So let's have a look at a quick video here. Thank <laughs> you. 
So whilst the wildlife remains the same, seeing it in a desert environment is a different place. We, all, we also move into different areas like Itosha, Itosha National Park, um, where we go to a reserve right next door that has a lot of rhino, white and black rhino, desert adapted black rhino like this. And we sit in a hide to photograph them. On the white rhinos, we get off and we get on foot with the white rhinos so that we can photograph them and change their perspective and put ourselves down low um, in the safest way possible. We get to areas where the wildlife that we see is in environments that are very big and spread out. And you wonder how do they survive in these things? And it creates a very interesting, more scenic wildlife shot rather than the up close and personal. And then the lodges that we get to go to have water holes in front and we get to see and be part of things. I think in the video you saw those white rhinos that were drinking at this water hole this evening. And it was just, it's beautiful to be in these spaces and photograph things with like-minded people and see beautiful, beautiful stark landscapes. So the desert is where we start because there's so little. It's unique, it's open, and then we go into a place called the Linyanti. Now, the Linyanti is located in Botswana, right in this northern part up top here, you can see the red block, very close to Vic Falls and Kasani, but it's right on the border of Namibia. Namibia juts out here into this area here, and it is a a beautiful area. We get there in the September time. We choose the timing of the year because that influences a lot of what sort of game we're going to see. The Linyanti River is a, a river that flows all year round, which means that there are a lot of elephants. This place is elephant heaven. And we're talking, you can see hundreds of elephant in a day quite easily. And specifically, the camp we use, which is Savuti Camp, is really beautiful because it's on this little spot where we look out onto the Savuti Channel. Here's some hippos in front over here. And there is a elephant who loves to be in the lodge. He's enormous. He's quite chilled. We have to be very careful with him. But by the same token, he gets to swim in front and it gives us a very unique perspective on how we do things. And whilst that water is such a draw point, it means that our predators are really great. And here you can see an image that I took of a young lioness. The lions were hunting, they were moving along. This lioness was moving through. And with the help of our local guides, they get us into positions where we're trying to get as low as possible. Now with a lion, you're not gonna climb out of a vehicle. That would just be a little bit silly, especially for um, tourists to do that because that could end up getting somebody hurt. But by parking in the right place, parking us a little bit lower, being in a position where we know that where they're going to, we put ourselves in front of the action so that we've got things coming towards us. And whenever we're photographing something, we're always looking for full attention. We're looking for ears to be facing forward, eyes to be facing the same direction as the ears, which means that all that concentration is pointed in the correct direction which makes the viewer of the photograph see what's happening. Now, I personally love shooting through brush because it gives this depth to an image that shows we're in the wild, that it's not a curated picture that we put something somewhere or ask the lion to go sit somewhere because you can't ask wildlife to do that. And it gives us positions where 
we get to photograph and see beautiful, beautiful things. Now, the Lignanti is world renowned for elephants. The concession that we go onto is massive. And the vehicles that we use, especially on the pro photos, is to ensure that every guest gets an entire road to themselves. That, that way, everyone has enough space to jump from one side to the other without any problems. Our photo destinations work the same way, except everyone gets a window seat on that one. You may not be on the same side or be able to switch sides, but at least you have a window seat to everything, and it gives you the ability to be in spaces. And while we're on these trips, we're looking for special moments. We're out super early in the morning to catch that sun coming up so we get the golden light coming through. And this lioness had been hunting along the edge of one of the channels here in the Lignanti and unfortunately didn't catch anything. Some people might say fortunately, but I personally enjoy watching craziness go on in chaos. Um, but it's all about putting ourselves in the right places. So let's see a little bit of what the Linyanti has to offer. Thank you. 
Again, we look at timing. Timing of the year is everything. The Linyanti has many different things to offer. We try to get there at the driest time because for photography, one, that means less leaves involved, and two, that means animals are under a bit more pressure and forced towards water sources, which means there's more interaction, there's more chaos, there's more photographic opportunities. But also, like we did with the with the hot air balloon, when we go to our two camps in Botswana on this trip, we actually get up into a helicopter and photograph things from above. And being in the Linyanti, being so close to the water and into a dry area means we get rarities like our roan antelope, which was in the video, and our sable antelope. These sable we photographed from the air. Here we had a hippo running back to the water. Um, as our helicopter came through showing his uh, not so happy side at the fact that there was this massive bird flying around above him. But perspective is everything and timing and thought process on all of it is very much part of what we have to consider when we're choosing a place to go and photograph Africa. So let's then move down and we move down from the Linyanti which sits up top here and down into the Okavango Delta. And the Okavango Delta is a very, very, very special place. And the reason why it's so very special is because it is one of the only deltas or rivers that delta into, not into the ocean. This delta's into the desert, into the Kalahari Desert. And it was done because of plate tectonics. And the rain falls up here in the, Oca in the um, Angolan Highlands in December, January, February, and the water then spills all the way down and gets diverted down into the desert where the water levels rise to create what is a magical oasis of water driven by elephants and hippopotamus because these hippos create channels which allow the water to move all the way through it. And this creates what I like to refer to as the Garden of Eden. It feels like it, it has palm trees, it's green, it's lush. And the weirdest thing is it floods in the winter when it is our dry season down there. So there's no rain and lots of water, which is a bit weird. And you get to drive through these waterways, look at these epic waterways moving and spilling across the world. It's really, really, really spectacular. Here again, you can see these hippo pathways as they move through they allow these water channels to then flow all the way down. And it creates a unique and very different environment to be photographing because animals during this dry season, like I said, one are forced towards water here, they're forced onto islands and their interaction grows. And this has its own impact. And specifically, 
in the lodge which we go to, which is called Chitavi, the leopards love to climb into the tr sausage trees because this is sausage tree flowering period. Remember, we normally do this trip around September, beginning of October, which is the flowering season for these trees. And what that brings is this unique opportunity to see chaos. Here we have two kudu eating the flowers. Up in the top of the tree, up top here, is a leopard waiting for the leopard to get close enough. Now this kudu behind her had already spotted something shady. They've learned to look into the trees. If they don't learn that, they're going to have a leopard jump on them. But she was waiting specifically for this leopard to, for this kudu to come closer. And I thought I was going to get one of those flying aerial photos of a leopard coming down onto an I was losing my mind very quietly in the vehicle so that we didn't uh, mess with anything. But fortunately for this uh, kudu, the other one had seen the leopard and it gave one off an alarm call and everything was set out. But there's massive crocodiles, your big five, leopard, lion, wild dogs, cheetahs, buffalo, elephant are all there except rhino. But we tick the rhino box in Namibia because that's quite important to get that big five experience. And you have these unique moments because of the fact that it floods that animals that don't normally go near water, especially lions, cats hate water besides your tigers, but lions hate water. I remember that I had a video when I was guiding in the Sabi Sands of a pride of 17 lions tiptoeing around a puddle because they were afraid of getting their feet wet. Here in the Delta, these lions have adapted to crossing it. They don't like it, but they go in and it gives you these unique photo opportunities, especially when you have local guides who understand how the animals move, getting you in position for a shot like this. So for this specific shot, we'd sat with this guy, he had put on a show for us. I mean, like the most ridiculous, serenade we'd ever heard he just roared and roared and roared and roared for us and then once he'd finished he was trying to get back to the pride and our guide knew that he was going to cross the water and possibly where he was going to cross so he crossed over we waited for him he walked into the water and you get these unbelievable opportunities just by knowing the right people and like i'd said Previously, the chopper makes a big difference to everything. Gives you a unique perspective on the world and allows you to see things from a completely different angle and create images that not a lot of people have the opportunity to get. And you can see the waterways spilling over those pathways and just the expanse of the desert filled by water. And this specific day, we our pilot got a little bit of a welcome home thing. As he parked his chopper, you can still see that the doors are on the chopper because he takes the doors off. As he was taking the one door off, the lion started walking out in front of him. And he had to jump in the chopper and hide away while the lions walked past and we got these cool photos. But the perspective creates everything. Just because we're on a photo mission, I ask for the choppers to leave earlier so that we have these long shadows, which creates a very different feel to everything. Obviously, animals react differently to photos, and this big bull elephant wanted to show off to the, to the helicopter, much like that hippo had done. And you can create these portraits of animals that are so unique and different. Again, those long shadows creating these shadowed images of the impala rutting and this male chasing that male and this guy coming in and what fascinates me every time i look at this image is the shadows look very much like what the bushman paintings used to look like um on this specific day we saw a massive crocodile in the delta really really big guy and we found a herd of buffalo, oh, excuse me, a herd of buffalo 
they were walking through and they were being trailed by a bunch of lions so we saw a lioness and a male lion moving through the brush so you get these really unique opportunities the more you do it we spend an hour up there in the air each time and with the right piloting you can really get some magical magical photos so always change your angle and look at how you're going so let's look at what the delta looks like And that's the magic that the Delta can offer. It is truly just a unique place which offers beautiful angles, beautiful spaces. And then we go to a lesser known but really amazing place, also a very dry habitat called Wangi, Wangi National Park in Zimbabwe. And on your way there, you get to do chopper flip over the Victoria Falls and you get to see it from the air. But going to different spaces, as I say, the animals very seldom change, but your perspective changes, your sense of place changes, your environment within which you put these animals changes. And even the animals themselves change. The lionesses are a little bigger. And one of the highlights of Wangi is the nature of our closeness that we get to these animals and the fact that we get to photograph them in this drier environment there's a lot of lions a lot of good elephants to be seen again your rare antelope sable roan antelope and off we go seeing these incredible places these incredible animals and we're always looking to create images like i said this specific day then Again, animals had been pulled towards water holes, and this is what we do. We try and find the places that are going to give you the best photographic opportunities. 
And these elephants had come for a drink and the lions were around at the same time. I share the lions do not eat elephants. Elephants chase lions, but the opportunity to get a lion and an elephant in the same place is, or in the same photo is a very spectacular thing. The other thing with timing is being in Africa around the August, September mark gives makes for some really spectacular photography, especially in the evenings. Because of the fact that there's so much dust in the air, you get these really orange and really red sunsets, which allow us to create silhouettes, or create memories that aren't normally captured. Your summertime photography, if you chose to do these destinations, would not be hurt, it would just be different because you would have a lot more cloud cover, a lot more aesthetics in that sense, rain and possibly wet animals, but that then plays its own part. It's a bit thicker, it's a bit greener, it's more beautiful for the photos and the contrast of animal versus greenery. But by being in these spaces at different times of the year, we can choose how we put this across. And the other great thing about the, um, going to Wangi is we have underground hides or hides around areas. So this is what it looks like. So this was one day at Linkwasha camp. We were at Linkwasha camp this time round. There's the camp, 300 buffalo in front of us, all of us standing around here and going into this little sunken hide where we could photograph animals from eye level. It's a game changer, absolute, absolute game changer. And waiting for that sunset was worth every second because as we sat there, we had elephants, we had buffalo, we had, couldn't come through. You can see this mama, she's pregnant. If you look on the side here, you can see the bulge of her baby in her belly. And then we can sit and just be part of it and enjoy being part of this entire world. You can sit in the front and just watch it, or you can be down there and using that light to create images and silhouettes and perspective. You can see how changing that angle can change the image completely, change exactly how people see it or how the animals are portrayed. Here's that elephant as she was walking past us. Big, shot from down low, able to make animals look bigger and more beautiful along the way. And here is another shot just to show you just how close we get to these animals as they walk past the hides. Really, really spectacular places. One of my favorite things to do when out in these areas is to take photos of the night sky. Because in our city worlds, we have so much light pollution and we don't get the chance to look up at the galaxy, to look up at the stars above us, to really realize just how small we are in the world. Being able to sit out there and set up our cameras and get the settings right and let the cameras do what it's doing and we sit in silence is an experience that I can't explain. Just being in these places, as much as we're looking for photographs and everything, one of the biggest tips I can give you is to be present in it. Because we don't often get to be in the quiet or be under night skies like that or be around wilderness that's moving at a pace that's so different to our everyday lives. We get to be in a space that provides us with beautiful views like these stars or epic landscapes like the desert and i remember the desert being this specific day being something quite incredible because as it was zero wind and as we were walking out of dead flat i experienced silence but i mean pure unadulterated silence not a breath of wind not a person talking, not a bird tweeting, not a cricket stridulating, nothing. Nothing, 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 to the point that the sound of my own breath was loud. 
And it's in moments like that that you put a camera down because you can never capture that silence. You can never capture those moments that truly take your breath away, that put you in a space that is big and wide and beautiful, that will forever be locked inside your heart to get to heights and see things from a different perspective. That's what we're out there to do. As much as we're taking photographs and trying to create images that will really capture a viewer, it's being in the moment with the animals that, are, that you're there to see. It's being close to Mother Nature and seeing those things from a different perspective. And meeting new people along the way and just being part of it all. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to some questions. Back to you, Rob. All right, thank you so much. Now, before we get into the question and answer session, I would like to remind everyone that you can submit your questions via the question field in your control panel. <clears throat> Excuse me, all right, let's get to some questions. So do you have a recommendation for what the ideal lens to take on this trip would be? So this specific trip, the pro photo trip, and especially the photo pro trips, we allow for extra baggage. So you can bring more than one lens. And as a photographer, lens changes everything. Um, anything between 100, 400 and a 200, 600 is a great lens. But for trips like this, our perspective is also changed through the type of glass that we use. So by per perhaps renting a lens, maybe even a very expensive lens like a 400 2.8 or a 600 F4 and having one of us guides help you through that moment and create a different perspective while having a second body that has your normal lens on it will change your life. It'll change your images. It'll give you something you've never seen before. And I'll give an example of that. So I remember going to the gorillas once and I took a 135 mil 1.8, um, effectively a portrait lens for people portraits into the gorillas. And it changed everything. It changed the way my images look because most of the time we're shooting with a 70 to 200. So changing a lens, will give you different options so by checking where we're going and having a range of lenses so i would normally have an ultra wide so i carry a 1635 f 2.8 lens on this um, i carry a 70 to 200 2.8 and i carry a 400 f4 with a 1.4 converter so that i can change to a 600 a 600 f4 versus the 400 2.8 so having three or four lenses to choose from. And then what you do is you have two bodies so that you can move between them. Alternatively, you could have a power zoom camera like the Sony RX10 Mark IV uh, or the Canon PowerShot, something like that as a second body. And then your primary DSLR or mirrorless with a good lens to go with it. But I would, always bring a wide angle lens for these places because the landscapes are spectacular and your ability to capture the stars one of those beautiful things great thank you so much for that so um how about uh when you are in the helicopter what what lens did you use there so the ultimate lens in my opinion is about a 70 to 200 um, because it gives enough reach to give you a little bit of closeness because the pilot can change height you don't want to get too close to things and you're not trying to get portrait shots from the air you're really trying to put an animal in situ from above so 70 to 200 gives you a bit of width enough width but also enough tightness to get in closer to things um, i find that the bigger wider angle lenses are, are more difficult to to use because the animals become so small 
that they're irrelevant in the photograph so it's finding the balance between them and anything longer like 100 to 400 becomes incredibly long and you you have no doors so you have a lot of wind resistance you stick your camera out there and it gets blown around and you're really struggling to keep it still the other tip that i have for that is to remove the lens hood so that you have less wind resistance and less less to move your camera around when you're flying in the helicopter so when we're riding around in the jeep uh, does the vibration of the jeep running is that a problem at all for taking photographs it would be a problem but we don't take photos on the move um or we try not to we try to get you into positions where the animal's going to be so it's a bit of a chess match so between having your local guide and your expedition leader with you you have this tremendous amount of experience saying okay cool the chances are the cat's going to move there we move around to a point we stop and we switch off the jeep whenever we're photographing we turn off these vehicles so that that vibration stops a lot of the camps will offer us bean bags which will give a little bit of extra stability but for the most part we're using fast shutter speeds to negate the any camera shake that we get from us holding it but the jeeps get switched off great thank you for that now the jeeps and the helicopters how much do they actually disturb the animals that we're trying to see that's a great question so the helicopter no doubt has a greater effect here you can see the hippo he's showing his teeth he's running back to the water it is a big noisy thing Fortunately, they only run very infrequently because of the cost of it. And the impact is for so short, we're there with them for 30 seconds and then we move on. So yes, it has an impact, but I think that the value that it creates is far greater than the impact. And in terms of the vehicles, these animals have been habituated over years, over generations. So a lot of these animals do not even see the vehicles when they come in they'll lie right next to them they'll walk right past you it's as if we do not exist now if you went into an area that was completely wild that had never seen vehicles before the animals would react negatively but it takes maybe about a month of careful approach and starting at a distance and allowing that comfort zone to get smaller and smaller till you can get close enough it's unbelievable how the animals do not react to the vehicles. And in fact, to the point that sometimes in certain reserves, we have to be careful that we're not influencing the hunts because the animals will wait for you to switch the vehicle on so that they can walk because they understand the animals can't hear them walking if the vehicles run. Great, thank you so much. So let's get back to being inside the Jeep. Um, do you recommend maybe having a tripod, a clamp with a tripod head or something else to help stabilize uh, the shot while in the vehicle? For the most part, bean bags work perfectly well. If you are shooting with something like a 402.8 or a 604, a really big lens that is heavy that you may not be able to carry, then I would suggest maybe a Wimberley bird swing um, to bring along with a G clamp because that'll give you an opportunity to maybe latch it onto one of these poles along here and then have that swivel on that to allow for those things. A tripod works, a monopod works also, but obviously the sturdier it is, the better for your, for your photography. But you also want the, the freedom to move because you're not always, we can't always guarantee that the animal's gonna be in the perfect spot. It's gonna move across you, you're gonna have to move across and if you've, stuck on something that is latched to the vehicle it inhibits your ability to move and follow especially if we have a hunting situation for example and something's going to be at high speed that's always something to consider so we've talked about the helicopter and we've talked about the jeep but are there opportunities to travel the delta by water yes yes absolutely um, especially in the Delta. On this specific trip, we go into the Lignanti and we do a bit of boating on the um, on the Savuti. There's an opportunity for that. 
Um, and then when we go to Chitabi in the south, there's less water because of the location of it. So Chitabi is down the bottom here towards the, the butt end on this side. So we're mainly on vehicles, but there is an opportunity. And if you choose one of the other Botswana trips, you will be able to get into the camps that are more central where there are boating trips or camps along the Lenyanti River itself, which will give you, again, different views to be on the boat and photographing from the water. Great, thank you. So when you're shooting your videos, what kind of a camera are you using for that? I'm using all my video camera, uh, my, my uh, Sony camera. So I have a Sony Alpha 1 and a Sony Alpha 7R5. And both of them are very, very adept at doing their video. I also like to use my cell phone. Um, the cell phones are amazing at taking, taking video. So while we're doing those video uh, things, I've got all of that set up. And I will be taking mainly with the 7R5 and my 70 to 200 because of the stabilization on it so that I can create more stable shots and again have more space to work with to hold a massive 400 2.8 and try and photograph or film with that becomes a strain on your muscles and trying to keep up with things seeing the lion's breath was pretty spectacular how, how cold was it that day wasn't too cold actually it was probably about 55 60 degrees in the morning but because of the pressure that that lion gives when he's squeezing that lung out of his out of his I mean, squeezing the air out of his lungs, it compresses that air and creates that mist. And it is something to behold, I must tell you. To watch that steam come out is just magical. So, would you say a GoPro would be appropriate to capture video on a trip like this? very much uh, it is quite a wide angle thing so you'd have to look at your gopro settings and probably choose a uh, narrower field of view so that you can get a bit closer i often have a gopro head strap that i put around my um, lens hood of my 402.8 so it points in the same direction so i can push record on that so i can photograph and film at the same time um, alternatively, I'll use a wrist strap um, for a GoPro, which I put around the 70 to 200, should I be photographing, say, the gorillas or something like that with, with those things. But yeah, GoPro is an incredible video source. You just have to be careful on your field of view because the wider it is, the smaller that animal is, the less impact you're going to have. Great, Richard, thank you. Unfortunately, that is going to be the last question that we do have time for today. So I'd like to hand it back to you for some closing comments. Fantastic, thank you, Rob. And thank you everyone for tuning in. It was lovely to chat again. I look forward to, I've got a few more webinars over the next few uh, months. So looking forward to chatting to you guys again. And thank you, NatHab, for providing these great opportunities for us to share in these wild spaces with you all. And thank you, Richard, for taking the time to present for us today. And I'd also like to thank everyone who tuned in today. Now, if you're interested in information on how you can travel with NatHab, please give us a call at the number on your screen, or you can send us an email at info at nathab.com. Our adventure specialists are happy to help you out. Join us tomorrow for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this week's lineup, including our registration links on our website at nathab.com slash webinars. We did record today's presentation and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I will conclude today's webinar. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next time.